check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's art. Arts and entertainment scene. This is the D. Three. Hello and welcome to the podcast for Detroit's Concerts, Comedy, Plays, Food, Drink, and More. It is Tuesday, August 13th, and I'm your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. And I'm Becky Scarcello. If you've never listened to the podcast before, I know we say this a lot, but you never know. There's somebody out there. This is the first, first episode time. they've ever listened to. Uh, I am the new guy. I am not from here. I don't know anything, and I play that up to my advantage as much as possible. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I am the native that uh, tries to school you on stuff. Uh, and I get school. Let's talk about what we're going to be discussing in today's episode. Uh, Michigan Comic Con is coming. Uh, if you're into geek culture, you're excited. I can you're tell. You're excited. I, yeah. You know, I've never been to a Comic Con. But you're excited about the whole thing. I, like, I do yes. like the geek culture. So yes. we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah. One of my worst fears in life actually came true for a, a Metro Detroit native musician. So Uh-oh. I'm going to tell you about that. All right. We'll find out what that's all about. Uh, Kristen Bell, who's one of the big stars from the area. Of course, she's out of Huntington Woods and went on to become Veronica Mars and she's on The Good Place. Uh, She is doing something very, very cool to support school teachers. We'll tell you about that. And I wanted to remind everybody about our Popsicle Stick Challenge. Yes, are you doing this? Have you started one at home? Oh, yeah. Oh, Oh, yeah. And I... At first, I'm like, I don't need to do, no, you know, do that and everything. But no, it is helpful. It is helpful. So explain how it works. Yes. Yeah, so basically, we talk about tons of stuff on this show. Where to go, what to do, what to eat and drink, what bands to see, things like that. Every time you hear something that you might like to do from the show, write it on a popsicle stick. We're talking just those wooden sticks that you can get at the craft store or eat a bunch of popsicles. They're only like twenty five ninety nine at Michael's oh, for geez. 50 of Everything's them. overpriced there. <laughs> so, and you write the things down, stick them in a jar, and when you find yourself with a random night, like, hey, we want to go out, I want to meet up with people, and you pull out a stick and say, that's where you're going. Uh, I started doing this. This is an idea that I got from some dude who's opening up a shoe exchange place over there on the Avenue of Fashion, yeah. who I swear we're going to have on the podcast as I soon know. as I know. As soon as you can remember his name. His name. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's my problem with everything. Uh, but we started doing this. I did a whole staycation around these popsicle sticks. You killed it. Yeah. yeah so and, and if you do it, you know, don't just do it. Tell us about it. Yeah, so, we need to know. So post it on any of your social media platforms. Tag us the debrief. Uh, do the hashtag Detroit Popsicle Stick Challenge, and then we'll see. And all we'll that. Share it, and you can also just leave us a voicemail. Yeah, you can Super do it through easy. the website. All you have yes. to do is click on that orange tab on the right, leave us a message, and we'll actually play it on the podcast. Exactly. So, so if you'd like your voice on the podcast, do it, do it, do it. The website, by the way, is thedebriefdetroit.com. We're going to talk about a lot of things in today's show. If you want us to email you a list of links to everything that we talk about, just go there, sign up for the email list. Or you can just text the word Detroit to 444-999. Last announcement, we have michiganpodcastproductions.com. If you are part of an arts and entertainment organization and you've been saying to yourself, you know, we should launch a podcast. The you answer should. is yes, you absolutely should. Uh, and we can help with that. So just go to michiganpodcastproductions.com. That's the website. Uh, and if you're interested, you know, contact us, let us know. Let's meet today's guest co-host. This is the Deep Brave. Today's guest co-host is the executive director of BoxFest, which is coming up. It's happening August 16th through the 24th at Planet Ant in Hamtramck. Welcome to the show, Kelly Rossi. Hello. Hi, Hi. Kelly. (laughs) So what is BoxFest? BoxFest is an annual theater festival that supports uh, women, local, female-identifying directors. uh, And we support and showcase their work through our theater festival every August at the Planet and Ant Theater in Hamtramck. You've caught me in the middle of Tech Week, so I'm really excited, but I'm really not exactly sure where I am. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a lot of work. So this is the final week before all the shows mm-hmm. actually go up. Yeah, so basically they've had this whole summer um, since we've had our first meeting in June to kind of put everything together. We had auditions, they had their own rehearsals, and now we're putting everything together in the space, lights, you know. Wow. All the sound, Make putting everything together. Yeah. They've got our, our amazing stage manager and assistant stage manager, Sarah and Andy, and us, the Molly, Amanda, and I, the two other uh, producers of the festival. And we're just there making the magic happen. Now, how many plays are we talking within this span of the several days? This year, it's 14. Okay. And you should, I think, the last Saturday, if you're there all day like from all, you can see all 
14 of them oh, on that so day. Oh, so they are performed multiple times. Mm-hmm. Nice. So they're, the way the schedule is, we put them into boxes. And so like you'll see box one, and that's the order that it goes in when you say you'll mm-hmm. see at 7 p.m. Or actually, we don't have any shows at 7 p.m. That's cocktail hour. You can come it, hang out it, with it's us. It's a hypothetical 7. <laughs> yeah, it's right. a yes. hypothet- Not Just for- come at 7. We're going to be there. Right. Um, there'll, but- be, there'll be liquor. You won't care. <laughs> <laughs> really, you won't care. Uh, we'll talk your ear off. Um, but then at 8 o'clock, you'll see box one is happening. So all three shows that happen in box one. And then maybe you want to come the next day. You could see box one could happen, you know, at four or five different other times. Oh, so it's like so, series. Mm-hmm. Each box is a series it, of plays. Yep. Each box is. Well, right now we've got an average of three three shows in each box. And then you'll see that that box will happen three times throughout the festival dates. Are these mm. premieres, things that haven't been seen anywhere else before? Uh, some of them are. Uh, some of them have been published and produced other places, but it's a national call submission. So oh. um, it's from anywhere uh, nationally. Um, we do a call through, um, and we do actually put in there, are you a Michigan playwright? So we can support as many Michigan playwrights as possible. But this year we got 996 submissions. Whoa. I would have never guessed that. So, so you get 990, almost a thousand submissions Mm -hmm. from across the country Mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, actual scripts. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then you have local directors who go through and choose the ones that they want to do. And we're using, um, Airtable, which is a great way to be able to sort everything. So we ask, you know, how many pages, how Mm. many women, how many men, how many, you know, uh, non-gender specific uh, characters do you have? How, you know, what's the genre? Where? And just a couple of things. And again, we ask if you're a Michigan resident, just in case people would like to use local playwrights. SAT score. Uh Right, exactly. (laughs) How tall are you? No, for real. What does it say on your license? That's Mm -hmm. where I lose every (laughs) time. (laughs) How much do you weigh? Right, Right. you all live there too. <laughs> whereas, we're, right, whereas us, they're just like, oh, she seems short and unintimidating. Great. Right. So wait, do you, do you choose the directors and then the directors get to choose from the scripts? With or? the directors come to the festival and then we, they choose which they, ones they, they choose, want. So, so you're oh. choosing the directors. Mm-hmm. And, okay. and yeah, and most of the time, with uh, unless they miss the cutoff date, it's people who are interested in it, you know, into right. the festival, people who've never directed who have before. So, you know, really? it's anyone, anyone who wants to do it. Absolutely. Oh, so you could have never directed any play before and mm-hmm. just yeah I mean and really have it's a it's a submission process that you're applying just to see you know just to say a little bit about who you are do you have any theater experience but I can't say that we've ever turned anyone away for not having enough experience right in fact we would never do that wow. interesting mm-hmm. yeah and so then they choose plays that they may have no idea who wrote it mm-hmm. what it's about like they don't have any connection to it no and sometimes like one of our directors this year said I went through tons of submissions and it really nothing was really jumping out at me is it okay if I'd use something that I wrote oh. and it's like yeah absolutely you know that it works that way too it has to fall into our submission guidelines which is really just between 5 and 55 minutes because everything is in our blocks everything oh, is okay. within an hour so I don't come from the theater world but you know obviously you've got different players you've mm-hmm. got you've got the actors you've got the directors you've got the, the you know the playwrights mm-hmm. this is really an event that is there to focus and support the directors absolutely uh, in particular mm-hmm. right right which is why it's uh, it's for female identifying directors so they're all you know they're all women they're all they're um kind of in a space possibly where they don't they're coming from a place where they maybe don't have a a safe space to be able to create, or they've never really had a chance to be able to say, I couldn't go anywhere else and direct and and be a part of a festival like this, because there's not really a whole lot of festivals like this out there. Yeah, I was going to say, are there, you know, are are there other events that focus more on actors or other uh, events that are more there to showcase playwrights? Yeah, the Detroit Women of Comedy Festival. I mean, there's tons of of theater festivals that are, 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 or even not just based on female directors, but just based on directors in general. Right. But still that ratio of who are even executive artistic directors of theaters and who makes up the bulk. Still, I think it was, and I'll have to look it up, but it was still 70% Broadway, off-Broadway, is looking at its male. It's still a male-dominated really? field. Okay. Absolutely. And even the artistic directors around Michigan, too. The landscape True. is changing a lot quickly, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, I mean, it's something that it's still needed. It's still something that, you know, the focus of, of, of being able to support women directors 
cool. it's necessary. Well, if people want all the details, they can go to the website, yep. boxfestdetroit.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it's happening August uh, 16th through the 24th, so two weekends. Two uh, weekends, over Friday, there, Saturday. Yep. In Hamtramck. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, we're glad you're here. Hang out and yep. have a good time. No, thanks. I'm excited. Keep up with us. The D. Download our mobile app. The D. Free. Becky, let's start with music news. I would love to. So, you know, I like Mo Mike Posner. We talk about him quite a bit. He's a hometown guy from Southfield, a singer, songwriter, musician. He's doing this crazy walk across America, right? So he's coast to coast. It's one of his bucket list things. He's like, I'm 30, 31. I'm just going to do it. We talked about this before. Would you do something like this? Yes. You would? I mean, I feel like I would. It sounds fun, but it sounds fun right now because... You know, just like taking a walk and then keep going. That's all right. It's a lot that, of walking. That's okay. It's a lot of walking. <laughs> yeah. I've driven through, you know, coast to coast, and there's a lot of boring there's parts a of this country. A lot of lulls in that. <laughs> yeah. It's 30 yeah. or 31, though. Like, you know, time for a bucket list. It's like, okay, all right, yeah, let's do like, this. I'm going to seize it. And I'll he's really it. tapping into, you know, inspiration for new music. He's put out some new songs. He's done a few pop up concerts. He did one here in Detroit. It was incredible at the City Theater. Like, I admire what he's doing. Would I want to do it? No. I would miss my regular life too much, I think. Just that's, that's a lot of time. I feel like I'd be okay. Yeah. I feel like well. I'd have my phone. I mean, like, I have two small children, so it's not feasible. So maybe it's easier for me to be like, no, I would totally oh, do sure. that. Yeah, like, <laughs> in my brain. You know, you can't. Yes, <laughs> yes, All right, so yes. he's walking coast to coast. So, you know, we had talked about him doing this and, like, some of the pitfalls, of course, that could be. This one I never had managed, and it freaks the heck Wait, out of me. blister? No. Splinter? No. Uh, okay, so if you know me, I am... Wait, broken shoelace? Nope. Deathly afraid of snakes. Like, almost irrationally afraid of snakes, I am. And he got bit by a snake. A baby rattlesnake. Oh! He got bit on the leg by a snake while he's walking. Across. That's not good. Yes. Where Colorado. do you? Colorado. Colorado. Wow. Colorado. Like a good part of like no, because it had it, to be like no. a. I mean, right? He's it's walking. The bad part of Colorado <laughs> where like baby rattlesnakes Look, rule. They call it flyover country for a reason. Um, all right, oh, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. And every time I think like, oh, my fear of snakes is just silly or whatever, then I see a story like this, and he cannot. He's not able to walk for weeks. Like he well, can I'm walk. Not going to be a target. I think you're wow. going to be all right. Wait, is he just going to sit target, there? Does no. he get airlifted out, or is he just going to? He got airlifted. Oh, geez. yes, and taken to the hospital. Oh. So he's got this swollen leg. I mean, no joke. They have to deal with that venom. It is serious business. And he didn't walk for a few days. Now he's like slightly walking with a walker, but he cannot resume the walk for weeks for sure. And he's not even sure if he still can. He's like, this could still, you know, be bad. And so he is in the hospital for a long time. Kid Kids, there's a lesson in this. The lesson is don't walk across the country. <laughs> God Walking. invented cars for a reason. Walking is dangerous. <laughs> Walking is dangerous. Wherever you are. So yeah, he was he was doing like 24 miles a day, and now he's laying in a hospital. 24 bed. miles a day is a lot of miles. I don't know. I feel like this is a thing. This is what happens. You know what I mean? Like you go to set this plan, and it's just like. Life Something. happens Let, when yeah. you make another you know, plan. He has an amazing attitude. Like I, I, he's one of the people I really like like following on social media. So he's been, and you can see too how the extent of this injury. But he's just um, posting a bunch of inspirational stuff. Like this isn't going to hold me back. You know, keep going for what you want to do. And he's actually writing rhymes, like spoken word rap kind of stuff, while he's in there and posting it. And it's, I mean, he's a pretty amazing guy. Does Google Maps have that thing where it says, "Is there still a rattlesnake there? Yes or no?" And, and then like, you, you could, could yeah, like write. on ways where <laughs> right, you click, exactly. yes, there is a policeman on the side of the road. Yeah. I don't know, but if there is, I'm going to look at it because I don't on. want this happening to me. I feel so. like that rattlesnake might have unfinished business. I know, it's angry. And days. it was just a baby, too, not even an adult <laughs> one. Yikes. Okay. So, um, a little more serious note is that. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of gun violence going on, of course, over and over and over again in this country. Just recently, you know, the shootings in El Paso and Dayton, Ohio. And so something uh, happened close to home. There was a hip hop show at Michigan Lottery Am Amphitheater, the Freedom Hill Theater there, that was canceled literally two hours before it was supposed to go on because of a shooting threat that was just called in to the police. So somebody just, you know, called in, said, hey, I'm going to show up with guns and shoot up the place of this show. So they canceled the whole thing. We're getting to a point here 
you know, I mean, who knows if this is somebody that was serious and was actually going well, to do right. it, or who knows if it was somebody, you know, playing a stupid prank yeah. or thinking that they were funny when they're not. Mm-hmm. We're getting to the, you know, we're getting to a point where everybody has to take it seriously. Absolutely. You can't put that many people at risk. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's super fresh. And what if that were to happen? And then immediately it's like, you had warning. How could you let that? Well, did you see the video of, of Times Square where they were doing on Broadway, they were doing to kill a mockingbird and then like a motorcycle backfired or something. And everybody thought that the shot, you know, was going on. Like we've gotten, Oh, I feel like we're all on edge all the time. Yeah. Look, Gilroy, right? I mean, that's 25 miles South of where I grew up. You know, oh, yeah, the, the yeah, garlic yeah. festival where that happened yes. before these El Paso shoot. I mean, this is getting. It's insane. Like, well, nothing is are, safe. Nothing is sacred. Yeah. And we're just sort of slaves to this, you know, threats, real or imagined. And yeah, bomb threats, shooting, whatever. So I, I feel for the authorities, too, you know, trying to work through this. So I think at first they were going to just beef up security. But ultimately it was the. Um, the performers um, themselves, their management, the promoters that said oh, yeah. it's off. Yeah. It wasn't even actually the venue or the sheriff's department, but yeah. I mean, they didn't I, want to risk I it. I worked in the radio industry. We put on a lot of concerts, right? My, my radio stations used to do that. And I can't imagine having to do that now with all this, st- all this stuff. I mean, I you know, because we did free outdoor concerts, you know, right. and I can't imagine. And well, just and in. now outdoor venues are just so different. I mean, I went to the Weird Al concert at Meadowbrook and there was a, a couple dogs, you know, it took a, a, a few minutes to get through security and mm-hmm. you're like, I mean, I at, at the Weird Al concert. So yeah. Yeah. I know it's just, it makes me just sad in so many ways and overwhelmed in so many ways. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just the fact that this is affecting you know, and we've we've talked about this before. How how this is an arts and entertainment podcast. This is supposed to be light and yeah, fun and right. entertaining. Yeah. We don't talk a lot about political subjects or things like that, but it's now it's pervasive. It's, it's reached it's into everything. that yeah. sphere where yeah. we're actually talking about concerts and plays that mm-hmm. are getting disrupted by mm-hmm. this stuff, mm-hmm. and it's just it shouldn't be happening. I know, and something needs to be done about it. Like it's like we're just at a point you know, something needs to be done. I know. Like try something. Exactly. Steps. You know, steps anything. towards change. Yes, please. No more thoughts and prayers. What we're doing now isn't working. Exactly. So we need to do something That's the definition else. of insanity, right? Keep right. doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so. Okay. All right. So I'm going to change it into a little bit lighter note. Back to something someone positive. Someone who is doing right? something. Yeah. Someone that is saying, hey, I have a platform to do something and I'm doing it. So Big Sean. Love him. He started, I think, about seven years ago, his Sean Anderson Foundation, and he's been doing incredible stuff with that platform and that money. So one of the things he's done is this weekend, kind of a community weekend for especially youth in Detroit. So last year was the first year. This year's the second. It's happening this weekend. It's called Detroit's On Now or D-O-N Weekend. So it's August 17th and 18th, mainly at the Boys and Girls Club on Detroit's West Side. So there's a huge block party he puts on that's all free and tons of um, amenities for the community, like health screenings and a job placement fair and along with fun stuff, music and dancing and you know food and all that. They give away 2,000 backpacks to kids going to school. So... Super cool. So that's going on this weekend. Anyone can come and show up from the community. He's also created a recording production studio that will be accessible for students to use. So really to nurture this next generation of kids in music and production. It's his second one. He has one at Cast Tech already. So this is the second one in the area right there at the Boys and Girls Club. It's going to have a stage with full production. So not only like aspiring rappers, say, but also kids that can learn lighting, music video production, all these are the things that go into the world of music um, they can access now and I thought this was super important as well on August 18th he's brought together a panel of experts to talk about mental health and he's kind of famously started exploring you know um, being open with his uh, battles with anxiety and depression and putting it out there and so this is an extension of that he wants to discuss with people you know the signs how you can help your friends if you notice things and you know just being more open about mental health issues so that's going to be going on too it is something we don't talk about enough i mean i was just for work i was at a conference uh with a lot of morning show djs from all over the country uh and mental health came up as a topic and i think it's similar in that 
first of all, I think if, if you're a person who is famous, uh, in whatever mm-hmm. capacity that you're famous in, like there's a lot of, uh, Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I don't want to say that that uh, you know all famous people have mental health issues, but there there are there's stress and there's uh, things this, um, need to be you know show this perfect side, right? Or, yeah, you know, be idolized well, and, and constantly be in the court of public opinion oh when you're gosh. being held to it, good or yes. bad. I, Everything I can't you imagine, say. but yeah. I mean, I think that he's always been someone who's been very vocal about mentorship and what yeah. that looks like and inspiring other people to be mentors in the Detroit area as well. So, I mean, he's just so great. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing I hear about him that I'm not like, oh, I'm what a great yeah. guy. Yeah. He, does. he does a lot of great <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah. So some concert picks for you for the weekend coming up. So DTE, uh, I, I'm looking at this list. There's lots of throwback stuff. So Wednesday, August 14th, Smashing Pumpkins and Noel Gallagher are, oh, are just on one a, Gallagher. Sharing, sharing a bill. Okay. Yeah, okay. Noel Gallagher of Oasis. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Is he in Smashing Pumpkins now? Who's in Smashing Pumpkins? Is Billy Corgan still in Smashing he Pumpkins? He is. Yes. Does yes. he still wear the Zero T-shirt? That I don't know. I haven't kept up. I wonder with if it still fits trends. or if, if his belly's gotten. I think he's still in pretty good shape. I mean, I think he could have ordered another one another at one. this point. You, you they make that multiple too. sizes. You know. Yeah, yeah. have a bigger size. Those yeah. zero T-shirts have been discontinued. <laughs> well, maybe he had bought a head. They'll bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, Hootie and the Blowfish and Bare Naked Ladies with right. Sharon Abel. Are we sure it's Hootie and the Blowfish? It's not just and the Blowfish. Is I, Darius Rucker going to be there? I think so. That, that, that's where <laughs> we've gotten so. to the point with all these bands. Where we're like, is this? Is this? Is it really? Is it really the, the lineup, or is it just the name? Yeah, yeah. Field and the Pips. Right. Done, right. Yeah, he's done some other stuff. Yeah, is my favorite Blowfish going to be there, <laughs> right, or just right. the other one? You know, yeah. is it really the, the C and C of C and C Music Factory, <laughs> oh, or is it just? Oh, that's C a good and. one. No, because one of them died. I know. It's yeah. a uh, shame. One of my favorite bands. Do you know which Martha Wash? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Now. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Right. I, that I Martha Wash? No, I think I think Freedom Williams just goes around touring under the name C and C Music oh. Factory now. Wow. I think just the just the rapper is the okay. only one, and okay. he calls himself, which is weird because he was just the guest on a couple of uh, tracks. The tracks, yeah, he wasn't the main dude. That's yeah. funny. Are you hmm. frightened by how much I know about CNC Music Factory? I'm I'm just loving it because that's why we're friends. It's, it's like it's yeah. why we're old. Yes. <laughs> We're old and talking about random music stuff. Yes. Anyways, also at DT Saturday, August 10th. Um, oh, no, it's not going to be the 10th on Saturday. What am I saying? It's going to be the 17th. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nelly, Florida, and TLC. And then this weekend at Michigan Lottery Amphitheater, Freedom Hill, Papa Roach with Asking Alexandria. And on Saturday, the 17th, the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones at Royal Music Theater. Oh, I know you're a fan, I loved right? Mighty Mighty yeah. Boss Tones. I mean, I did radio in both Providence and in Boston. And, of course, they're, oh, they're, they're from, from Boston. Boston yeah. They do the hometown throwdown every year. And uh, so I have I have a couple of Mighty Mighty Boss Tones uh, stories. I went to Brown University, and I took a, a, I don't know, some sort of music education class mm-hmm. right and so I'm fancy some I don't know what it was but I'm we're sitting there there's <laughs> like, like there's like class. yeah yeah there's like a music dozen, preach something like that yeah there's like a dozen people <laughs> in the class right around this big long table and we're having a discussion about the music business and I work at a radio station so I think I know what I'm doing yeah, you know, you're like, I know college this. radio station but I know this and, and so I start talking and sort of this other guy at the other end of the table starts uh, you know taking the the opposite end and, you know and, and we're kind of having Having a little debate, and the rest of the class is just sort of frozen and and uh, uh, looking and watching this sort of ping pong conversation. Uh, and it goes on for a while, and the class ends. And he comes up to me at the end, and he goes, "Oh, do you know so and so?" And I say, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I, I, I work with him. He works with my radio station." I go, "How do you know him?" He goes, "Oh, yeah, uh, he's an independent record promoter. He works with my band." And I said, "Oh, who's she? What, what band are you in?" <laughs> And he says the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. No, yes. he was sitting in your class. He oh. was sitting. It was Nate Albert of the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, oh. who was like the uh, the youngest guy in the Boss Tones. Uh, and and you know we actually we still talk every now and then. He's like mm-hmm. a big wig head of A and R at a record label now. Like oh. signs all these acts. He I mean, was I, taking I, the class. He was taking the class. We were in, taking the class together. Yes, he was in university. Yeah. Wow. So good so, story. Always like been that. a Mighty Mighty Boss story. Tones fan. Yeah, I would say so. So how about Puddle of Mud? 
<laughs> no, I have no puddle of mud stories. No, I don't either. What's but puddle they're, of mud? What, what's their? They're at the Fillmore this weekend. You, you know the, the you know the puddle of mud song. She hates me. She, yeah, oh. she, she effing hates me. Yeah. Uh, oh my blurry. Lord. I like the song Blurry. I like I, the song yeah. Blurry. Yeah, I, yeah. Could go I with that. was just like, I can't believe that's who Puddle of Mud is. The, it is that recent of a song. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then also Saturday, the Alarm, Modern English, Jean loves Jezebel. Is that St. Andrews Hall? Welcome to the D. Breathe. D. Breathe. Uh, let's talk about one of the big events that's coming to town, Michigan Comic Convention. Michigan's Comic-Con, Comic-Con. is coming to Cobo Center this weekend. Are you into the geek culture there, Kelly? I am. You are? Yes. I can't call myself geek, though. Like, I have geeky what, what, attributes. Like the sci-fi movies? Are you into the superheroes? Are you into the video games? I like the superheroes. I'm into video games, like specific video games. Which ones? Yeah, what do Like you Mortal Kombat. I wow. mean, like, I used oh. to be, that was, like, the thing, until they got to, like, uh, um... Too much co-play, like co-op, because uh, I oh. played video games alone. Oh, no oh. Reason. and then it was like you can. <laughs> it would be a lot better if you had friends. It's like, yeah, I know, but I don't want things. Yeah. yeah, I always like the uh, the music in Mortal Kombat. There's yeah, it's some pretty good, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They nice. had quite the production team of that <laughs> video right, well, game. Let's test your geek oh, no. culture knowledge. All right, so this is the big event, don't obviously that's me. coming. There's a bunch of uh, big stars in that world, and that's the thing about this is they always have stars and and they do. You know, they're stars in their own little universes, right? Right, uh, right, 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 right. Big in their certain genres. I I always like the the artist alleys of course at Comic Cons you know I like the artists and their comics and their paintings and so stuff. we're gonna play a game here uh, I've got a quiz for you I'm gonna name the uh, the actor or actress okay. and you're going to tell me what their role is I'll give you choices you're gonna oh, tell me boy. what what they're famous for okay this is good I'm excited about this okay. I'm excited about the wrongness of what's happening <laughs> yeah, <right. gonna> happen. <laughs> first one gonna be at uh, Michigan Comic Con this weekend Michael Dorn okay, okay. Name Michael sounds familiar. Dorn what is he famous for? Was he A, Lieutenant Worf on Star Trek The Next Generation, B, the butler in the movie Clue, which was based on the board game Clue? Are we competing against each other? Maybe. I'm giving myself closure. Or okay. C, he played Sean Hunter on Boy Meets World. I have honestly no clue on this one. Which one was Michael Dorn? Lieutenant I'm going Worf. Worf. I'm going more if that's the, mine. The butler in Clue or Sean Hunter? See, the butler in Clue, I don't think that would be a big draw for people. I don't know. I'm gonna Have go- you ever seen the movie Clue? I was going to say. Well, no, yeah, no, really? I'm not hating on the movie, but I just that's mean a great it movie. as a celebrity a great thing. Movie. No, I think I agree with you. Um, just as a celebrity thing coming to come in. I'm going to go with The Boy Meets World. You can go with Sean Hunter, but what about you, Kelly? I said Worf. I'll, I'll yeah. go with Lieutenant Worf. Lieutenant Worf it oh. is. The Klingon okay, on Star yes. Trek The Next Generation. The bigger, butler in the movie Clue was Tim Curry. Well, that was Tim Curry. Oh, that's, that's right. Of course. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. Who also, yeah. you know, was that's right. of course. Pennywise and it. I and love him. Uh, okay, number two. Matthew Lewis is going to be there this weekend. Matthew Lewis, what is he famous for playing? Figwit the Elf in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Neville Longbottom in the Harry Potter films, or Ted Mosby's son on the TV show How I Met Your Mother? I think I actually know this one. I think it's the Harry Potter. I was going to say Harry Potter, but I thought it was wrong. I'm just going to like go in full on Harry Potter. I'm fine with that. Okay, we're both going Harry Potter. That is correct. She played oh. Neville Longbottom. I don't know where I pulled She's that from. Be. Ooh, he's that, a good looking girl. I'll, t- I'll yes. tell you this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the actor who. Uh, who plays Ted Mosby's son on How I Met Your Mother will um, also be there this oh, weekend. But that's not Matthew Lewis. Wow. Who is it? You don't even know, do you? <sighs> not off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Walter Emanuel Jones. Okay. What is he famous for? Walter Emanuel Jones. Hmm. Was he the love interest of Jennifer Lopez's character in the movie Anaconda? Oh, of course I didn't see that because that's about snakes. Was he the Black Ranger? On the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It's just about one snake, really. That's true. But it's a really enormous <laughs> snake. <laughs> ask, ask Mike Posner about that. Right. <laughs> uh, or did Walter Emanuel Jones play Langdon, the companion of Doctor Who, in that show's 63rd season? Oh, dang. Walter Emanuel I think, Jones. I think I know this one. All right. So we should say it in secret. Right. Um, 
I'll read the choices one more time. Was the, he the love interest of Jennifer Lopez's character in the movie Anaconda? Was he the Black Ranger on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Or did he play Langdon, the companion of Doctor Who, in that show's 63rd season? Okay, I wrote mine down. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> the Black Ranger. I said that, too. Because oh. I think that's who it is. That's correct. Okay. He is the Black Ranger. I watched this show so many times, I could, like, see the scroll. I was like, oh, my God, oh, that's totally him. Wow. Wow. What kind of music? Did you like the music in that, too? Yeah, it was good. It was, it was good. decent. Was, I can see that going from big. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers to Mortal Kombat. Yeah. It seems like an actual Yeah, oh, it's sure. not a huge leap. All right, last question. Bob West. Bob West going to be there this weekend. He was the original voice actor for which of these? Barney, the purple dinosaur. Gozer, the Gozerian in the Tomb Ra- Raider video games. Or Kit, the car in Knight Rider. I, to- I actually know this one. Oh, you do? I okay, do. good. I'm glad. I'm just going to say Barney because I don't know. It's Barney. I'm going to say Barney. It it's is Barney. It is Barney. Yes. It is Barney. I do know that. You, you did better than I expected. I, Three out I, of four. My nice mind work. is blown. Nice not only that, I, you missed what I thought was the easy one. I thought Michael Dorn was going to be the easy one. That's the I one. Don't not, I'm not a Star Trek person. <laughs> well, anyway, Michigan Comic Convention is happening this weekend at the Kobo Center. Go check it out. This is the D. And while we're on the topic, let's talk about some of the other things that are happening around town. You guys ever have a side hustle to earn extra cash? I'm not sure which one I'm doing right now. Uh, like which which side, one's your right? main like hustle? Which, what is and the side and the... what's his main? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, yeah, what's the fine side? Because I'm just hustling. I'm just <laughs> hustling. Uh, yes. yeah. Yeah, Every yeah. day I'm hustling. <laughs> Uh, Always, okay. I've got a side. Yes. Well, if you need another one, I, here's a I one that not. I think is pretty cool. Uh, Erebus, the haunted house, uh, is hiring 250 scare actors. <laughs> well, this is cool. Are you guys haunted house fans? I know we've no. talked about this. You're no, not. No, You're not either. Oh, no. no, I'm not paying to be. I'm scared in right pain. now. Right. Yeah. Like I'm, I can just be scared on my about own. It. Like yeah. I'm just, I'm just in general a little nervous. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So I just like it doesn't take much. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love the haunted houses. I've been to Erebus. Uh, Ed you Tari- like it? Oh yeah, Ed Terebus was one of the first people we interviewed for this podcast. In fact, oh, I think sure. the very first episode he we had him on the podcast. Really? Yeah. Time, yeah. Uh, and and he was great and he was fascinating and and they they're just so creative with it and they they challenge themselves to try oh, and yeah. do interesting stuff. I get so. I get the artistry of it. I get the acting of it. I just don't want to pay to get like molds and t- and uh, no. Mm-mm. But would you be one of the actors? Would you? I mean, you're. I, I don't know. You act. No. Would you? I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a different type of thing. I would want to talk to the actors that do it. Like I oh, would so want to produce. Like, yeah, I would want to mm-hmm. manage the team of actors that go oh, there. You know I would I mean? love to do to just I'm jump sure out of people and scare would. people. Sure. Sure. Be great. Here's how it works. Uh, you 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 basically audition, and then if you get it, you go to the Scarabus Academy, uh, where you get taught. That's cute. It's basically like well, you know. Know, like a one day thing where they sit you down and okay here's well, you know <laughs> this guy's having a heart attack here's like what you do like <laughs> well yeah there are safety issues yeah I bet you, do. Yeah, I yeah. Bet you really do this but kid pees his pants right. what do you do but there's, I bet there's a lot of like boundaries you know what I mean oh, like they yeah. really want to be scared but you can't go right. to this you know what I mean exactly. there's like boundaries yeah, 101 yeah, yeah. somebody gets bit by a rattlesnake that kind of stuff yeah uh, there's all kinds of new animatronic puppetry that's going to be there this year oh, new costumes as well and I know I know it's early I mean but it opens up up Friday, September 13th. Oh, of course it does. It's, Friday uh, the 13th. it's coming. We're talking about fall. It's funny because I like spooky stuff and I like like a little danger, a little like, I like costumes, but it's thrills. Yeah, the thrills of it. And I like the darkness of Halloween, but not when it turns into like the jump scare and the blood and like, oh, ugh. I'm all about it. Yeah. You can get more info at hauntedpontiac.com. That's the Arabis website. Uh, Gold Dollar, which has been a piece of Cass Corridor's history, uh, has been demolished after a suspicious fire that Mm. burned it down. Uh, This just happened recently. Uh, Gold Dollar was a space for uh, gay men and drag queens back in the 60s, and then it became an experimental performance space around the turn of the century. In fact, in 1997, the White Stripes played their first ever live show there. Uh, And then just, you know, in the recent weeks, there was this fire that... They haven't ruled out arson yet. Oh no, they you know it's pretty suspicious. There's a lot of uh yeah, I think I think uh 
uh, Jeffrey Epstein is probably the guy behind it. I don't really know. It could be. But uh, it is one of 34 buildings that's owned by the Illich Group. The Illich family, of course, owns 60% of mm-hmm. District Detroit uh, around the Little Caesars Arena. And they've been criticized a lot lately because they haven't developed a lot of right. these properties. And this is one of them that they hadn't developed. Right. And a lot of promises have been made and were in the plans that haven't. They've been paying a lot of fines, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh Kristen Bell, you a fan? Yeah, I am. Absolutely. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Of course. I, I loved Veronica yes. Mars, especially seasons one and two. Season four is now out. Uh, they, they've made it, and they've made it available, but I haven't watched it yet. Oh, yeah. I haven't um, kept up on that. Uh, it looks good. It, yeah, it does. And, of course, The Good Place, uh, oh, yeah. which I love Your favorite that show. show. I love that show. Uh, Kristen Bell is the actress. Uh, she is from Huntington Woods, as yep. we've talked about yep. many times before. She's one cutest baby when yep. she was little. Uh, and in the parade has, in Huntington Woods. Yeah, in the 4th of July Oh my parade. God, that's best. I, I know, love right? it. <laughs> she now has 11 million followers on Instagram, probably because of that cutest baby thing. Mm-hmm. Probably. <laughs> that's probably what put it over the top. Yeah. Uh, and so she's doing something really cool to support teachers. Every Friday, she is going on Instagram and she is posting a photo of a teacher with the hashtag Featured Teacher Friday. That's a cool, cool ring to it, too. And yeah, and she's telling their story. She's giving their bio. And then she puts a school supplies wish list in her bio to help them raise money. Because this is oh, what, you know, my mm-hmm. my sister's a teacher. My mother's a teacher. My brother-in-law's a teacher. I come from a whole family of teachers. And they have to dig into their own pockets oh, for a routinely, lot of school routinely. supplies. I mean, just They're, basic, you know, mm-hmm. Kleenex and stuff like that. Oh, sure. And, and so she's helping them out uh, because That's she knows cool. that they're doing that and really kind of trying to leverage her fame to, to help support teachers. So yeah. featured teacher Friday is the hashtag. Go do a search for it. Some other things going on around town. Thursday, August 15th. If you've never seen the original Star Wars, seen it? Seen it? Of course. Yeah. Like a bazillion oh, yeah. times. Right, good. You're good Americans. Uh, the original Star Wars is the throwback Thursday film that's being shown on the giant screen at the Henry Ford Museum. Also this weekend, you've got the 37th African World Festival happening at the Charles H. Wright Museum. It's free. Ugh. There's over 125 vendors of authentic African uh, and African-American and Caribbean food, apparel, accessories, things like that. Uh, Piper Carter, friend of the podcast, been on the podcast mm-hmm. before. She's producing a fashion show there, so go check that out. Uh, Friday, August 16th, Founders, the brewery, is releasing Cone 6 IPA at Pawabic Pottery. Aww, that's cute. I don't know what Cone 6 means, but... Uh, okay, it's it's totally a pottery reference. I think it's like has to do with the actual clay. How do you know this? Are you a potter in a secret life? Uh, y- mm-hmm. I'm going yes, <laughs> to yes and that. Because uh, yes, I know you've done and. improv uh, before. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, well, I'm in my in my non-side hustle. I work at the YMCA and in an arts program, an arts outreach program. One of the things that we do on site is a pottery program. Really? Yeah. So as soon as I said Cone, I was like, I get that. I, not totally, fun. but I know enough. Are you brewing beer in your pottery? Uh, not today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. Now that you said it, I kind of want to go see if I could do it in the kiln. Well, this is something <laughs> that Founders is doing as part of a series that uh, they're spotlighting historic Detroit companies. And so this one spotlights Powabic Pottery. That's awesome. Uh, Sunday, August 18th, Wayne Brady, famous improver. Oh, this guy. He's fun. I like him. From Absolutely. Whose Line Is It Anyway? And uh, watch that. A m- number of other things. He's going to be performing at the soundboard. And then... Woodward Dream Cruise. You guys have to sell me on this. I got to be honest. I'm, uh... I don't look at me. Yeah. No, go ahead. You Wait, you wanted one of us to sell you? Yeah. I thought you were going to sell me. No, I don't care. No, that's not, yeah. that's not fair. Right, it's a gonna, lot of traffic. No, gonna, I mean, it's cool. There's some cool cars. There'll be a traffic jam in the suburbs this yes. weekend. Yes, yes, <laughs> This is the deep. Detroit. This is the deep. Breathe. All right, that's it, Kelly. That's a show. Oh, wow, my gosh. Yeah. I'm so excited. Nice, huh? I'm, I was a little nervous, uh, and I'm a little less nervous. Oh, good. Well, a couple of things we want to plug. First of all, we have a mobile app. Go download it. Easiest way to listen to the show. And you can also listen on your Amazon Echo. Just say, Alexa, enable the debrief podcast. All right, let's do shout outs. We always like to shout out something locally that we've uh, just want to acknowledge. Becky, you want to start? Yes, I have a surprise for you, actually. Okay. I was going to do a different shout out, but I'm going to do this one instead. You ready? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I got this groovy keychain, and it's a hoe button. 
And I got it at the Tuxedo concert at L Club <laughs> yesterday they were, or they to were, Sunday. They night. were giving out hobo. Well, no, I bought it. I oh, bought you it. bought it. But part of their thing. So this is Mayor Hawthorne and Jake Wan. Their collab. They have you know three albums out at this point. It's super awesome show. The vibe was great. Everyone's dancing the whole time. They have their tuxedos. They have their glitter. They have their band and their singers, and it was so much fun. And one of the things they do on stage is they have a giant button like this. <laughs> So in certain songs, it's like, <laughs> and so they're like, hey, we made them. You can go buy your own. And they made them. And they're I like their own Spencers. I think it's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> so, and I knew you would hate it. I was <laughs> fine with it. Now, when you press it, does a hoe actually come or? Um. Well, oh, is it? H O O. No, I no, it was no. Gar- it's a, uh, what, yeah, you, you thought yeah. it was a garden. Yeah, that's I what I it meant. Was a garden home. Yeah, does, no, a, gar- I thought, does I a gardening was a garden utensil home. show up? <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. Why would it be a garden home? Well, why you? wouldn't it? Why wouldn't <laughs> it? What if I don't know anything about Major Hospital? Yes, and didn't you learn the lesson? <laughs> Yes, and. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, and it's missing the other two hoes, <laughs> and we're not at Christmas and yet. And it is red, so, yeah. Come but on. I'm going to find it. But see, look, it says tuxedo on the side, and oh, you can right, put your keys on. It. But it is easy to hit by accident, so I had it in my first today, and it was like, yeah, going on. Oh, you're you just randomly your yelling ho? I'm like, like oh. the <laughs> <laughs> So we'll find some creative ways to use it within the podcast. Oh. All right, Kelly, what about you? What's going on? Anybody uh, you want to give a shout out to? Um... No, I want to give a shout out to karaoke in general, but karaoke night on Thursdays goes ah! late. <laughs> I want to give out to the, the go. Oh, it's late in Hamtramck, Michigan. <laughs> Uh, the ghost light in I've never machine. done karaoke there. Oh yeah, it's it's super fun. Um, it's a good time, and you can check out the space. It's a good space. All right, uh, I want to give a shout out to J. Chris Newberg. We talked to him on the podcast last week. Yeah, uh, stand up comedian who's uh, out in L. A. writing for really big names and been on America's Got Talent, and he's written songs for uh, American Idol, all sorts of stuff. He was in town for the Comedy Castle at, a to record his podcast, but also to record his next comedy album. Uh, and went and saw the show Saturday night, and he was absolutely fantastic. So did he have his guitar? Too? He did have his guitar. You know, he did most of the set without the guitar, oh. and then he just pulled the guitar out at, at the, the end. end. Cool. Yeah. So, um, but it was a fantastic show, and I think that the, when that album comes out, it's going to be really great. So, congratulations to him, and thank you to you, Kelly Rossi. Oh, thank you. Yes. Box this Fest. Was fun. So, remind everybody one more time: what is Box Fest, and where can they get all the info? It is an annual theater festival that showcases uh, women, female identified directors from the Metro Detroit area, and we are going to be at the Planet Ant Theater in Hamtramck, Michigan, this uh, Friday and Saturday, the 16th and 17th, and then the 23rd and the 24th next weekend. And the website for all the info? It's boxfestdetroit.com. Awesome. Well, we'll go check it out. Come back again tomorrow, will you? I'll think about it. All right. (laughs) Until then, Detroit's moving. Keep up. The D. Brief. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. Hello, Debrief listeners. My name is Michael Dupree, host of the Michael Dupree Variety Hour, a Planet Ant podcast's podcast. The Michael Dupree Variety Hour is an art showcase and comedy show where we feature local musicians, painters, poets, artists, sculptors, directors, writers, improvisers, and more. Stop by and discover your new favorite artist. Meet some outrageous characters and revel in ridiculous sketches. The Michael Dupree Variety Hour, the world's only mandatory podcast. Planet Ant Theater, now doing podcasts. Check us out at planetantpodcasts.com. Hi, Craig Folly here. If you're listening to the Debrief Podcast, well, I've got two things to say to you. One, you have impeccable taste. Two, you care about the community that is Metro Detroit. That's why I think you'd appreciate my daily show, The Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit. Every weekday, I tackle the big issues in politics, business, arts and culture, sports, Whatever's on the mind of Detroiters and Michiganders, we will talk about it. It's all open for discussion. And keep this in mind, news doesn't have to be boring. Sure, we talk about serious stories and we have interviews and commentary, but we do it in a way that, if I'm doing my job right, is informative but also entertaining. Check out The Craig Folly Show on Deadline Detroit for news, knowledge, hopefully some fun tossed in. Okay, okay, look, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hate to interrupt the debrief podcast, okay? I love it too. I'm a fan of it. I've been on the show. 
Hey everyone, my name is Tom McCarthy. I'm the host of Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle podcast. Among other things, I'm a local stand-up comic, I'm a nudist, I'm a bon vivant, I'm a real loudmouth, and I love to talk comedy, and I get to interview the biggest names in comedy every single Tuesday on the Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle podcast. Check it out on all available podcasting platforms. You can probably find it where you found this fine show. So enough of my yapping. Aren't Seth and Becky wonderful? Don't you love to debrief?